Body language. Body language is how people communicate without speaking. Since the dawn of you. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think it's fair. Uh, 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 and you'd almost, in many ways, seem yourself appear less intelligent. Not less intelligent in a stupid, he's dumb, he did it way. In a very, like, I couldn't hurt anyone. Women are experts at this. Women do this the best. Watch a female get pulled over by the police. Watch her just start going, oh, oh, really? Uh, playing stupid is a great way to play innocent. And it's very, very effective. What you'll find in body language, sometimes the biggest result is when you can juxtapose them against each other. So while I was in court, they'd ask me questions. They're like, oh no, I don't even really know how that works, to be honest with them. I don't, don't really know. I'd add in these little delays. I'd deliberately slow my speech down. But then when I had to make a point, I'd completely flip it. And I'd be very adamant and direct with my words. Even now, and even in all my tape speech videos, you'll notice how I use my hands. If I have a point to make, I use my hands to make the point. I direct the point with my hands. You're gonna notice me doing it all the time now. Something I do on accident. But if I wanna make a point, I'll say something like, and the reason for this, the reason your mom has a big ass is because she eats too much. I'll do things like this. I'll explain the reason, I'll get your attention with my hands, and then I'll directly give you the reason. And I'll, I'll put it into your brain. I'll put it in with my hands. This is something I do completely by natural. I don't even have to think about it anymore, but it's something I did learn. And it's amazing with women. It's great with women when you're arguing with them. And they'd sit there and be like, blah, 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 blah. I didn't fucking fuck her. Be quiet. I haven't hit her, but the, the physical action makes them sit there and go, oh, okay. Just be, be very aware and very avert with your hands. Like I said, this course is just going to be knowledge flying at you. So when you talk, where are your hands? Where are they? How do you use them? Your hands, you should be extremely expressive with your hands, especially if you're a man. When I, before I was a kickboxing world champion, I worked in sales. And I had the best sales record in the fucking company, obviously. And a lot of that was down to body language. I would sit there in front of somebody. I sold TV advertising. I'd sit there and say, you need TV advertising. They go, oh, we do pretty good. I said, yeah, you do good now. But in the future, you're gonna need, you're gonna need TV advertising. It's the future of advertising. You're gonna need it. I'll tell people, you, you ain't got a choice. You better buy it today. You need this. I sit there and go, okay, well, let me look at your current strategy and then maybe I can improve it. Da, da, da. No, fuck that garbage. If you're a salesman, you're watching this now, you better start telling people they need it. You can't live without this. You need this today. I, I understand my industry. No disrespect, you're a diaper company or you're a fucking water company. You understand water. You know more about water than me. I understand advertising. See what I've done there. You understand water. That's your thing. Advertising is my thing. You do, don't tell me about your advertising strategy because I don't fucking care. Advertising is my thing. It's mine. I own it. And if I say you need something, you better buy it. So you understand war. War is your industry. Advertising is my industry. I've been in this industry for a long time. I'm telling you, with your current strategy, you're having success now, but you won't have success in the future. And you're going to need a different form of advertising. That's exactly how I'd be. People be sitting there going, oh, okay, sign. So you have to be very, very careful with your hands and how you use things. I am, I am very good at that. You, me, this. All these things are learned. You have to adapt your own style. But you need to sit there and think consciously. When you speak, what are you doing with your hands? If you're going to sit there and talk with your hands in your pockets, you're not going to be nearly as convincing. If, you, if I want to sit there and I want to come across as, there's the old mafia boss, you know, you can sit and be like with your hands in one place and just use your eyes instead. That works. But that's a far more, that's the kind of body language you use when you don't really want to talk anymore. If I'm, about to, if I'm about to have someone shot and they come in to apologize to me before I have them shot in the head, I won't be moving my hands. I'll be listening to them like this. Because I don't want to listen to them and I don't want to talk. This is, I don't really give a fuck anymore. Like, like this, same. Your hands across, you don't really care. When I met Donald Trump Jr. in Trump Tower, I was super aware of his body language. What Trump did is something I've never seen before, Trump Jr. We sat down and we started talking. He sat like this, with his hands open on the table. I don't know where he learned that from, but I'm sure he was taught. But we were having a normal conversation. We had coffees. We sat down at the table. It was a round table, not like this. And he sat down and he sat like this, which I thought was quite interesting. I've actually never seen anyone else do that before. So it kind of threw me a bit. And I thought maybe the reason he was taught that is because it's so unusual. Because I read people's body language and every other position, this, that you've seen it all. I've never seen this really ever. So that was interesting. So first thing you have to do is be very overtly aware of how you use your hands when you speak. 
If you want to direct something, if you want to be believed, if you want to be convincing, your hands have to be involved in that process. When I was in my police interviews, once again, I would use my hands overtly. And I would sit there and say, I actually said in some of my police tapes, and when I get them back, when I'm finally cleared of all charges, even though it's been going on for four years, I get the tapes back. I'm going to release them on Twitter. It's going to be the best thing ever because I made these police look like fucking fools. But I would say to them in the tape, I would say, very I said on the tape, I said, do you have a camera in here? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, we do. I said, okay, I want this for the camera. I don't want this for the tape. I want this for the camera. I am innocent. I am innocent. Me, I've done nothing wrong. I say innocent with your hands up. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. They're different things. I'm innocent. I want this on camera. For the tape, reference the time. What time is it? Point at someone when you need something. Uh, 5.15. 5.15. Look at the day. 5.15, 24th of November. Look, I've done nothing wrong. I said that shit directly to the camera. I've referenced it off the tape. Body language makes a huge, huge difference. And basically, if you want to be believed or trusted, in my experience, which is fucking vast, you need to use your hands effectively. I've given you some tips on how I do it. You have to adapt your own style. Like everything in the world, if you completely replicate someone else's style, it comes across as unnatural and it doesn't work. You need your own style. You can't be exactly the same as me, and I can't be exactly the same as you. Same as boxing or fighting. I can teach you how to do jab cross, but everyone does it a little bit different. Everyone has a slightly different style. So you have to adapt your own style. But what you need to do is be overtly aware. If you're aware of things, you'll pick up on things and you'll change things. So the first thing is you need to use your hands more effectively, especially to be trusted and listened to. All right, next. How to speak convincingly. To speak convincingly, a lot of you probably already know these things. You have to talk loud, you have to talk clear. And this is another thing you need to learn. I'm, I'm, in, I'm actually tempted to do a course specifically on oration, but you need to learn to speak effectively. The way you interact with the world outside of your little digital keyboard and your Twitter bullshit is with your voice. I know you're paying attention to my hands now. Is with your voice. If your voice is meek, or if your words aren't clear, or if you don't say what you mean effectively, then you're not gonna be taken seriously. People take me seriously because when I speak, I speak with a conviction. They sit there and go, this motherfucker knows. The way he's talking, he knows what he's talking about. And I do. Let's sit here and go, oh, okay, well, um, so for, um, fuck that. Um and ah is something that you need to forget instantly. I don't care if you have to train yourself. I don't care if you have to look in the mirror. Get rid of um, get rid of ah, get rid of gaps. It just completely destroys your entire image. That shit needs to go. And it's something that can be learned. And, I, and when I sit there and listen to people, oh, well, yeah, uh, well, yesterday we went out and then, um, it's like, what the fuck do you mean, um? I went out and then, um, well, you don't remember what you did yesterday? How slow is your fucking brain? You look like a moron. 99% of people look like idiots because they don't pay attention to how they speak. So with oration, it's extremely important. You get rid of ums, you get rid of odds, you get rid of this bullshit. It's one of the first things you have to do to speak convincingly. Second things is with the hands, the body language. The third thing is you have to be, if you're standing or you're sitting regardless, you have to have a presence as a person. Nobody believes a nobody. So if you're sitting in a room, you need to be overtly taking up space as a man, especially. They call it mansplaining. That's what all the feminists call it. He's mansplaining. He's taking up space. I'm a man. I'm a fucking man. I've got space. My space. It's mine. And I have something to say and you're going to listen. You want to be believed. It's a combination of things, but a lot of people just want to sit in their little chair. Uh, well, I was thinking that for the progress report, maybe it's garbage. Also, there's nothing wrong with talking too loud. Outside of shouting, fucking talk loud. Conquer the room. You're going to piss some people off, but guess who you're going to piss off? You're going to piss off the betas. You're never going to piss off the boss. Like I said, when I used to have a job, the boss loved me. I'd sit in a meeting and just be like, look, here's how I sell. I was half yelling. I don't know about what the other guys are doing, but what I do is I tell them they better buy it today. The boss sit there and go, this fucking guy. But I had the best sales record. If I sit there and go, um, well, I don't know how you do it, but what, what I uh, sometimes do is, uh, it's just bullshit. Fucking scream at people. Sit there and go, no, this, that, bang, direct. Don't be afraid of the attention you're going to get. If you have alpha body language, if you have serious body language and you project, you're going to attract a whole bunch of attention. If you're shy, you're not going to want the attention. It's going to impact your psyche. It's going to impact how you portray yourself. Forget the attention. Don't worry about it. It's coming. There's no other way to project yourself. 
Project yourself in a way where you attract attention. Be loud. Fuck all wrong with it. Be loud. It's exactly the same with lying. Learning how to be convincing and how to be believable is the same when you lie. Now, people say when you lie, people look away from the eyes. In my experience, what happens when people lie is they actually know this, that everyone's been told they look away. And they look at you more trying to prove they're not lying. The easiest way to lie is to not change your body language in any way from when you're telling the truth. A polygraph test, does only, how does a polygraph test work? You can't just plug yourself in and say lie or true. It only knows by comparing you to a baseline. First, they ask you your name. They ask you questions you tell the truth to, and then they compare it when you lie, and they see the difference. Well, body language is no fucking different. If you know you're going to have to lie to somebody, you need to sit there before the conversation even starts and talk about something which is easy for you to talk about and be smart enough to be speaking with one side of your brain and with the other side of your brain, measuring where are my eyes, where are my hands, how am I standing, how am I sitting. And then when it starts coming to lie, you don't alter shit. If you're already looking them in the eyes, continue to look them in the eyes. If you're not looking at them, don't. If your hands are a certain way, keep them there. You only get detected on lies when you alter your body language. It doesn't matter what body language you have. You can be like I am now, alpha, projecting, trying to make a point, ultra convincing. Or you can sit there like a meek little, uh, it doesn't matter. If that is the, the default and you retain the default when you're telling the lie, then you have nothing to lose. So when you tell a lie, it's not about, well, how do I act when I tell a lie? It's not changing how you acted before. This is the most important thing. But most of you guys are so unaware of your body language, you're so unaware of where your hands go, unaware of where you're looking. Think of your last conversation with someone. Where were you looking? Think about it. Uh, uh, at them, I guess. I guess, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You're going to do like ignorant. You don't fucking know. If you learn your own shit, and you adapt your own shit to have a style which is favorable to you and favorable to your outcomes, this can be very, very easy for you to lie because you can replicate your own style. So that's how you fucking lie. I will pass any lie detector test there is. In fact, I'm writing that down for a tape speech. We're getting a lie detector company in here. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to pass it. And the reason I'm going to pass it is because I don't give a fuck. Ask me a question. Tape, you the greatest man alive. Yes. True. That's the baseline question because everyone knows it's fucking true. Tate, do you give a shit about these hoes? No. True. They're going to ask me a lie. Like, Tate, is Meghan Markle a good princess? I'm going to say yes. Which is obviously a fucking lie. It's still going to come up as true. Hope that bitch doesn't get hold of that piece of paper and uses it as proof. Daddy Tate validated me. Fucking hate that hoe. When we're talking about the correct way to be, when I'm talking about things like hands, seat positioning, etc., this is universal across sexes. The same way you can make a man like you and you can sell products in a business meeting, it's the same way you can make a girl fuck you. It's no different. All of it is based around primary evolutionary human instincts, around confidence, competence, trustworthiness. These are things that since the dawn of time, they look at a dude and go, this is a competent guy. If a man looks at you and thinks this is a competent guy, they want to be your friend. In a business relationship, if they look at you and think this is a competent guy, they want to give you money. And if a girl looks at you and thinks this is a competent guy, she wants to suck your dick. It's the same. There's no difference in your body language for a woman or for a man or for business or for anything else. It's, proje it's projecting competence and confidence and combatability in all of the situations. You need to learn to walk into a room like I am the baddest motherfucker in the room. I'm the baddest motherfucker on earth. You gotta walk in like that. Just walk in like a fucking G. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Doesn't matter if you're about to fuck a bitch or fucking sell a, sell a fucking window. Who gives a shit? You walk in like, I'm the shit. Yeah, sit down. Yeah, coffee, please. Thanks. The fucking man's here. The fuck? The man's here. You sucking dick? Well, obviously. You gotta be like that. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna come back to me and go, okay, thanks for the course, but what do I do with this girl? You do with the girl the same shit you do with the guys. It's the same thing. Because it's the same general attributes which are seen as attractive. Keep that in mind. How to intimidate? Well, I don't really like the idea of intimidating unless I mean what I say. The easiest way to intimidate someone is to mean what you say. But just like lying, in most of my personal experiences, you intimidate by changing your body language. Humans are amazing at detecting change. If something stays still, 
It's not nearly as attractive to the human eye as if something moves. Something's like a corner of your eye and it's still, it's fine. But when it moves, you're like, what the fuck? Humans detect changes in velocities, changes in speeds. So how the human eye works is detecting changes. And it's very similar with body language. So let's say I'm out, and let's say three guys are gonna attack me. And I don't want to fight the guys, because I might lose. So I want to intimidate them. So let's say at first I'm like, hey, get the fuck, fuck off, da, 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 da. and we go outside. And they go, you're gonna fucking do it. And I go, and I've, I've been overtly, I've been aggressive, I've been the big man, I'm like, look, get the fuck away from me, da, da, da. and they come out and they want to fight me anyway. I'll change my body language completely. I'll say, okay, okay, we're gonna fight now, okay. And then they'll be a bit like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna fight now. I've tried to tell you not to and you wanna fight, so I've tried to be reasonable, it's done, so we're gonna fight now, so let's go. And I'll start walking towards them. And that sudden change in body language is what makes people think, whoa, what the fuck? You have to change your body language. Typically, people intimidate by screaming because they start low and then they go high to intimidate. So they'll start like trying to be sensible and reasonable and the person doesn't listen and they'll go, you know what, fucking did it, and they'll change it. But it's not the shouting which is intimidating, it's the change in body language. But everyone's accustomed to that. I do it the other way around. The other way around for me is far more effective. Let's say you're arguing with your girl. You're a stupid bitch, blah, blah, blah. I'm tired of your shit. You're always fucking these hoes, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, fuck hoes, what? Shut the fuck up. Cook. Blah, 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 arguing, arguing, arguing. Eventually, she won't shut up. You get to the point and go, you know what? You know what? We've argued enough. We've argued enough. And you get your, get your keys. She goes, where are you going? Just go, oh, no, I'm just going to go out. Don't worry. No, I don't want to argue with you. I'm just going to go out. I'm just going to go out. I take your keys. She's going to be more worried about you being sensible and calm and nice than if, than if you shout at anymore. Because it's the change in body language. You have to understand, body language isn't about do this to be this way. It's about being able to flip it. And it's having that sudden deceleration, that massive change suddenly is what makes people think. When I've been attacked before, that story I just told you is a completely true story. This was only one guy. I had a guy who was talking shit from the other side of the fucking room. I said, bro, stay the fuck over there. And he was talking shit. And he said, oh, 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 you ain't nothing, you ain't nothing. I said, bro, I'm not trying to fight you. If you come around, I'll fucking hurt you. Talking shit, da, da 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 Anyway, he gets up. Cop starts walking over, and I stand up and say, okay, we're, we're going to fight. Let's, let's, at least, let's at least do it outside. He goes, yeah, all right, we'll go outside. I said, no problem. Okay, let's go. We walk downstairs. He's like, you know what? And fucking do it. He's trying to get me to argue again, because that's how he felt comfortable. Because Tate, you know, I'm just sick of your shit, Tate, da 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 I said, no, it's fine. You're sick. We're going outside. I'm, I'm done shouting. I'm not a girl. I don't shout. Ain't my thing. I don't shout like females. We, we spoke. I told you to stay away from me. You didn't want to listen, so let's go. I wasn't being intimidating in any way. I wasn't acting intimidating. It's the change in body language that made him think, what the fuck is with this guy? He didn't want to fight anymore because I became nicer. All of a sudden, he's like, this guy's too calm. Motherfucker's going to shoot me or some shit. <laughs> this guy's crazy. So it's not about being a certain way. It's about being overtly aware of your body language in a way that allows you to switch it on people. Most of you are so unaware of your own body language, you can't effectively change it. Okay, you can go from happy to angry or from normal to shouting. Those are basic things, a kid can do that. But you can't do it on a very conscious level with tiny details. You can't flip reverse it and go from angry to nice. You can't mix it up. Nobody in this world has dealt with someone, a full grown man going from crazy screaming to nice inside of two seconds. That comes across as psychopath. That scares people. When you come across as, you, you fucking did a fuck. You know what, it's okay. It's okay, I agree. We should, we should hurt each other. That's what makes people think, what the fuck? This guy's fucking nuts. That's how you intimidate someone. The sudden fucking change. Everyone's dealt with it from happy to angry or normal to angry. No one's done with it the other way fucking around. I reverse it on people. I start shouting. You come near my car, I fucking start shouting. But then we've, but once I know it's violence time, I, I drop the whole shouting act. I go straight into the nicest man in the world. I'll smash your fucking face in. So you have to be aware of your body language and able to change it. This is extremely important. A lot of people talk about mirrored body language. I don't like this shit. People go, oh, if you mirror someone's body language, they like you more. Nah, fuck that. That's pussy shit. Oh, so someone crosses their arms. Oh, it's what Simon says. It's a little fucking punk. I sit how I want to sit. I come, I come into the other room. I sit like this. What? I sit like this. If everyone changes their body language, I don't fucking care. This is how I sit. Because I'm in charge. Alphas don't change their body language. Look at orangutans. 
Look at fucking apes. You're the closest relative we've got. The alpha doesn't change for shit. Everyone else changes when he's around. So don't believe that mirroring crap. Well, if you go out with a girl and you mirror her body language, shut the fuck up, man. I'm going to sit there with a girl. She crossed her arms and I crossed my arms and then she sucked my dick. Never. Never. I sat down and I was the fucking man. That's why she sucked this dick. Nothing to do with fucking me crossing my arms when she did. Fuck that shit. It's garbage. Forget that mirroring. Now, we're going to move on. Smiling. Smiling is effective. But it's only effective if it's used selectively. People tell me, Tate, you never smile. That's not true. I do smile. I smile selectively. My smile has a value. If you guys are watching this, I'm trusting you've seen the PhD course. How do you give your attention a value? By making it rare. Why is gold valuable? Because it's scarce. My smile has a value because I rarely smile. If you walk through life, one, you look a fucking moron. One. And two, who gives a fuck if you're smiling or not? If I smile, my smile has value, has weight, has currency. I've had girl, my girl, I've been with six years. She'll message me, I made you smile today. She's happy that she made me smile. Because it's hard to do. There's achievement in it. Oh my God, I made him smile. He woke up and I'd already cooked dinner. and uh, He woke up and I'd cooked him breakfast and I had coffee in his favorite mug and I brought it to him and I told him I loved him and he smiled a little bit. She got her reward, which is my smile. If she woke up and I was always, hey baby, hey, 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 what the fuck, she didn't give a fuck if I smile or not. I smile when it's deserved. And you're a fucking full grown man. You should be walking through life smiling. You need to smile at people when something of merit happens. I'm not saying come across as a miserable fuck. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you're sitting there looking like you're gonna fucking kill yourself. You're not Eeyore. I'm saying you need to smile selectively. Once again, you need to adapt your own body language style. You need to decide when you're gonna use your smile and when you're not. You don't say trying to hold it in. I'm saying you've probably learned to smile instinctively. You're smiling at things that don't really make you smile and you're smiling at things that you don't find funny to be polite. But let me tell you what smiling is. Smiling is a sign of submission. Look at apes, our, our, old, our closest relative. Apes smile to submit. When the alpha appears, the beta males, they show their teeth. They go, it's, a, it's like, don't hurt me. It's, this is what this is natural. You can study this today. Google YouTube right now. They show their teeth in a sign of submission. That's what smiling is. If you're going through life and every person you meet, you're like, hey, 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 hey. You're basically saying to the world, no one hurt me. Please, please, hey, I'm a nice guy. How are you? Fine. You, yeah, good, yeah. Does Trump smile at every motherfucker he sees? No. It's Trump. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah. Fucking then someone who actually, like a real G turns up. Someone who's done a fantastic job that week. He'll give him a little bit of a smile, though. Smile, and they'll be like, oh, the Trump's why does Trump smile matter? Because he doesn't walk through life looking like a fucking happy clown. And neither should you. Your smile is a selective tool. It must be rare. It must be used effectively. You smile at a girl, she needs to fucking deserve that shit. You smile at a guy, he needs to deserve that shit. You can be walking through life fucking smiling. Life's not all about just being as happy as possible. This is the bullshit the media is trying to sell you. They're purporting this idea. If you're happy, smile, be nice. Everyone who's happy all the time, smiling all the time, nice all the time is a fucking loser. You know it and I know it. So you don't want to be that guy. You haven't got to be fucking smiling. Use your smile selectively. I use my smile selectively, especially in dates with girls. If I'm sitting there, it's a little bit frosty, whatever, whatever. I don't allow awkward silences because I'm too efficient for those things. I've got a PhD, a pimp and hose degree. But if uh, we're talking and the talk's just very general, I'm, I'm very neutral. I'm like this. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. When she starts to flirt with me a little bit, or if she starts to be a little bit more open, or I know for sure she's going to get dick, then I might smile a little bit. I'll be like, bitch, you crazy. I'll smile. She'll say something, and I'll smile before I answer. Say, like, oh, the, I didn't expect you to be like this. I thought you'd be more arrogant. I'll be like, why? I'll smile. But if she says that at the beginning, I didn't expect you to be like this. I expect you to be more arrogant. I'll be like, why? I'm very different. I decide to smile when she's receptive to me. If you're receptive to me, and you're going to fucking do what I want, you can have a smile in return. Smile is a weapon. Like, like your attention is a weapon. Like everything you have is a weapon. You're a walking bag of weapons. So most of you men don't understand. Your attention has a value. Your smile has a value. You're, you're replying to someone. It all has value. And you guys are just running through life throwing it away. Every single chick giving them attention for no reason, even though they don't suck dick. 
messaging girls all the time, friend zoning yourself, smiling at everyone, just throwing your weapons away. Then how the fuck are you going to do something exclusive? How do you show me I've made you happy if you're already smiling at every dickhead you've ever met? It's stupid. Now you don't have to come across as a horrible person. I don't have to. I don't. I don't smile often at all. But let's say I'm in a, in a store and I'm buying something, and the guy goes, "I say, yeah, this much. I'm like, thank you, thanks. I'll nod a lot. If, I, if I'm walking past a security guard, he looks at me. I won't smile. I'll nod. A nod is a. You and I both know who the men, the bad men in the room are. All the big men know the big men nod. All the big men know. If you're not a big man, you're watching this show. What's he talking about? If you're a big guy right now. You know. When big men walk in the club, and there's another big man in the club. You instantly, human instinct, you catch eyes like, okay, he's the only person in this club who can match me physically. If there's going to be a fight, it's the only guy I have to worry about. And you always link eyes. And you always kind of do this thing. This like, yeah, all right, cool. We've, we've clocked each other. We've decided we're cool. It's done. The big man nod. It's a thing. Big men nod. But a nod is far more effective than a smile. You want to be polite, nod at somebody. Yeah, thank you. And cheers, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. What the fuck are you happy about? You just bought fucking skills. You happy over skills? You little bitch. You're full of my man. You fucking smiling over skills. What the fuck's wrong with you? If I have to tell you to give a firm handshake, then I don't know what the fuck you're doing here because you should know that already. If I have to tell you that fidgeting makes you appear bored, you should know that already. If you want to look bored, this is all be a shit. You know this one. If a girl, if you're sitting with a girl and she crosses her legs, she's basically saying, you're going nowhere near my pussy. That's, just, that's like an anti-rape fucking instant reaction. You know how to read these things. You know these things because you know how to read them instinctively. If you sit with a girl and she does this, and she does this, you know you ain't bad. You know it and I know it. All those pickup artist dudes, they teach what they call a chemo or some fucking gay shit. I hate pickup artists. I hate pickup artists because I know I'm the baddest. I'm the best. So what annoys me. There's all these guys, Red Pill, Mr. Lucario, Bad Boy, The Dating Game, all these, all these dudes... And every time I see the girls they're fucking, I'm like, what the fuck is this, bro? These guys are fucking girls. I wouldn't even fuck. I wouldn't even touch their girls. And they're bragging about them. Like, yeah, I went out and I gamed this chick. She's a fucking five. Your nine is my five. You call her a nine? She's a fucking five. My girls look like fucking Playboy bunnies. My girls got two million followers on Insta. My girls have billionaire exes. My guess is my girls are actually hot. Your girls are basic. I hate pickup artists. Anyway, they're all, they're all fucking idiots. All of them. None of them are good with me. But they talk about this Kino thing where you need to do some touching on the girl. And I agree that, that I do that myself. That can help. I have two things I do. One is when I first meet, uh, it depends. I don't really do the hug and kiss kiss thing when I first meet a girl. I don't really do that unless I know her quite well. But once we're talking shit, one of the things I get to do is I, I say I'm a kickboxer. I go, oh, you're a kickboxer? Dude. I say, yeah, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to train you. I'm going to make you a little ninja because you're beautiful and no one's going to expect you to kill me. And I give that compliment. And they're like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're going to work for me. She goes, really, who do I have to kill? I say, well, are you strong enough? And they'll always go, yeah. And I say, go on, let me see. And then they'll tense their shit muscles. I'll go, mm, got work to do. That's how I first do my, the Kino break the ice, touch them thing. I do the feeling their arms thing. But that only works because I have huge arms. If I did that and she looked at my skinny ass arms back and goes, well, where's your fucking muscle? Well, it doesn't work then, does it? So you have to choose your own style. But yeah, if they're all crossing up and they don't want you to touch them, whatever, whatever, then that's obviously a bad sign. You know these things already. I don't have to tell you super fucking obvious stuff. If you've watched it to this point and you haven't taken any notes, I doubt it. I've definitely told you some shit you should fucking, you probably don't know yet. Especially changing it from, from angry to calm. I know none of you fuckers do that because I've never seen anyone else pull it off from me. Eyes. Eye contact. A lot of you are not very unaware where you're looking, especially when you're talking to somebody. I look in people's eyes. I do that very, very specifically. Not in a creepy way. I don't want none of you fuckers to take my videos. Sometimes I say things which are so nuanced and I'm worried that people are going to be like, okay, Tate said this, so I have to do this. And you're going to go sit there with a girl and be like, hi. You look a fucking psycho. Like you have to keep things into perspective. But especially if you want to drive a point home, you look in someone's eyes. Like I said before, the biggest theme behind this body language course is the ability to change your language. It's the change of language that people perceive more than the language itself. So if I'm talking to a girl and I'm like, blah, 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 doesn't matter what I'm saying. Let me think of a sentence. It doesn't matter what I'm saying. But when I want to drive the point home, only then will I look in her eyes. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm really glad I met you because you are beautiful. 
I'll say the beautiful part and look in her eyes. Before I say that, I'm looking away. And that's what makes it more effective. It's more effective because I've gone from looking away to looking at her. If I just looked at her and said, I'm glad I met you because I really think you're beautiful. It's not, for me, it's, it's far more effective for me to say, yeah, well, I'm glad I met you because I really think you're beautiful. I'll look away and then I'll look at them when I say something I mean. And that change in body language is what they perceive and that makes you far more convincing. You see where I'm coming from? You'll tell a girl she's beautiful, well, make sure you're not looking at her and then look her in the eyes directly as you say it like a fucking man. Eye contact. Eye contact needs to be used as punctuation. This is punctuation. Everything is punctuation to make them understand a point. That's how your eye contact should be used. I'm not saying you have to lock eyes at every motherfucker you meet, but it needs to be used as punctuation. Same with men. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, get the fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. When I look in his eyes, it's when I mean it. When you're saying it, you're not looking in his eyes, you don't mean it. Say I look in his eyes, I mean it. And if you guys have watched any of my other videos, you understand how important it is to never say something you don't mean. If you've not watched my video on Tate speech, it's completely free. Trips on depression. It's about 25 minutes long. Watch that one. I talk about how important it is to say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't tell somebody you're going to knock them out unless you're going to do it. Don't be one of those people who walk through the earth talking shit. I say, look, bro, you don't got my face. I'm going to knock you the fuck out. If the first time I look in his eyes, I say I'm going to knock him out. He knows. It's the first time I've looked at him. He knows I'm going to mean it. That's how eye contact should be used. Power poses is a thing. I had a lot of people send me lots of emails about this course asking me questions. So I got asked about power poses. They say, like, if you sit there and you do the Superman pose, you start to get more, you naturally release more testosterone. You start to feel stronger. I believe that's true. I do think that works. That is definitely a thing. You know, that's certainly a thing. Do I walk through life with a Superman pose? No. Should you? No. When you look in the mirror, you look in the mirror like, yeah, I'm a fucking man. Yeah, you need to do that, of course. But that's more here than a power pose. So I'm only answering this thing now because I know some of the fuckers are going to come back and go, what about my power pose? If you want to walk through life doing this and make you feel a little bit stronger, go for it. How about you just get strong as fuck anyway and you ain't going to worry about walking around looking like a fucking superhero, like a dork. So that's that shit. I've told you a lot about being domineering and conquering. However, a lot of you guys will know one of the 48 rules of power is never to outshine the master. So a lot of you may have a boss and you can't act that way because it's going to piss your boss off too much if you're too overpowering. I managed to be overpowering in my sales meetings because I was such a fucking fantastic salesman. The boss wouldn't say shit to me because I made him so much fucking money. But if you're middle of the road or something, you can't come across that way. You're going to annoy people too much if you haven't got the results to back it up. So one of the key things you can do if you want to make people like you, two things you want to make people like you. One's a body language trick, one's not a body language. What is, if you want to make people like you, ask them lots of questions. Because everyone loves to talk about themselves. If, I have, if I'm meeting someone extremely important, which happens all the fucking time, from Trump Jr. to anyone else, and I think, okay, I need this person to like me. I don't sit there and try and impress them. I don't sit there and go, okay, Andrew Tate, son of a chess grandmaster, genius IQ, four-time kickboxing world champion, I've got lots of girls, lots of pussy and money, and I got Lambo. They don't care. Nobody cares. I sit there and go, yeah, okay, it's really good to meet you. Yeah, I've always, I've always been interested in ask them things. Because if you ask people questions, then they have, to talk, they have to answer them. And they have to answer them by talking about themselves. And everyone loves themselves. So if you sit there with someone and they only talk about themselves for an hour, they're going to love the conversation. Yeah, it was really good to talk to you. Because I, I got to brag for an hour. This is especially effective with women. Women love this shit. If you sit there and try and make a woman impress her, I'm this, I'm that, blah, blah, blah. Nah. Sit there and go... You're different than I expect. So what do you do? I'm a hairdresser. Hairdresser. Don't you get bored of like talking to people all the time? Well, no, actually, I don't mind because some of the people are really nice and some of the people are my best customers. Da, da, da. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Well, I don't even go to hairdresser, as you can tell. I'm already beautiful. So how long have you been a hairdresser for? Oh, I've been a hairdresser for this long. I went to college and da, da, da. Add in little bits of your own dialogue. But basically, just ask them questions. I took one guy on uh, pickup coaching. I don't normally do this, but I had one guy who paid me money to go out with him for a weekend and pick up girls. And he said to me, oh, I'm really nervous, I'm really nervous. I was like, bro, ask them questions. Say hello. Here's how you introduce yourself. Here's how you say hello. Ask them questions. And if you do that, you're 75% there. Because they're just going to talk about themselves. You, it doesn't matter what they reply. Who gives a fuck? You're a hairdresser. You're a nurse. You're a stripper. It's all the same shit. Who cares? Oh, really? That's interesting. Same answer to them all. Ask them. Let them talk shit about themselves. This is super effective to make people like you. Super effective because everyone loves to talk about themselves. So keep that in mind. And then the body language trick is to really look like you're listening. Most people don't look like they're listening. 
If I want someone to like me, I really look like I'm listening. So if I need a boss to like me or a girl to like me, I'll make sure it's clear I'm paying attention. So if you've ever been in like a group of people and there's one girl you want to fuck and everyone's kind of talking amongst themselves, da, 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 da. but when that girl's talking, people are half listening. But when that girl's talking, not nuance, don't look like a fucking creep, but make it clear you're listening. If other people are all talking to you and she starts talking to you, go, okay, yeah, look at her. I'm listening to you. Because then, they, oh, he thinks I'm important. He thinks what I say matters. And the boss is the same. He, he listens when I talk to him. He thinks I'm important. He thinks what I say matters. In a corporate situation, what I used to do, I used to do this all the time, bosses love this shit. I used to walk around with a little notepad and pen. So if I got called to the boss's office, I'd go in there with a notepad and pen and sit there. And when they were talking to me, I'd just randomly write things down. And a few of them said, why you got that? She said, I don't want to miss any key points. And they sit there and go, this motherfucker takes everything. But they like that shit. Like, I'm talking, and he's writing it down to not miss my key points. Yeah, well, Mr. Andrew, you are the best salesman. You have sold three times more than everybody else. But I'm a greedy CEO, cunt. So I want you to sell more. So I was just wondering if you could possibly do this, or if you try doing this, because you're my cash cow, and I want to milk you for all your worth. Yeah. You're right. I did try that, actually. I did try that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the email. I'm going to send it to you. Let me. Okay, yeah. You sit there, and you. I'm listening to you, sir. What you have to say matters. I'm writing it down. They're going to fucking love you. They're going to love you. They're like, who the fuck is this guy? And then they call the fucking jackass salesman in. Hi, where's your sales? Yeah, I've tried. Uh, that's how you be liked. Making people, make it clear you listen to people. Most of you don't make it clear you're listening to someone. Make it clear you are listening to them. The notepad and pen example is fantastic with a boss. They fucking love that shit. They're just sitting there going, this dude is fucking, this takes his shit seriously. Because a boss hires you to make them money. They're always going to pay you less than they make out of you. Otherwise, they wouldn't have a business. So if you're sitting there taking them seriously, you're taking their money seriously. Wouldn't you love it if you had someone who came into your house with a pen and paper and goes, how can I make you more money? Tell me what to do. You'd be like, I fucking like this guy. Who wouldn't? So you just make it clear you're listening to people. And ask lots of questions all the time. Especially, once again, with the boss, they love that, ask questions. So even if I knew the correct answer, I'd ask them a question. So I'd say uh, something like, let me go, I have my pen and my paper, I'm sitting there. Fucking, I'm almost tempted to get a job again because it was so easy. You know, I never failed a job interview, ever. I'd go for jobs that, were, that required a degree, and I didn't even have a degree. I'd just walk in there. Go, oh, so Mr. Tate, uh, your degree? I haven't got a degree. Didn't need one. I didn't need one because I'm the best. I'm prepared to prove I'm the best. I'll work for a week for free, and I guarantee within six months I'm going to smash any sales target you set me. I don't have time to go to university and sit there for four years. I'm here to get paid. I'm here to get you rich. I'm here to make me rich. I'm the best there's ever been. And then sit there and go, what the fuck is this dude? Well, he's going to work for free. Let's at least try him out. I never failed a job interview, ever, ever, ever. I got every fucking job. I tempted to go back because it was so fun. But sit there with my pen and paper. And I'd ask him questions, knowing the answers already. I'd be like, okay, sir, well, I've been trying two different types of proposal emails. One of them is getting about 20% more responses than the other. So it's the one I think is the best. But I want to send both to you, so if you have time, I know you're busy. If you could just read them and just confirm, that's the process I should be going, that's the path I should be going down. That's the process of the emails I'm going to be sending. He'd be like, okay, yeah, send them across to me. As if he's going to say no, the other one, where it's not as effective. Of course he's going to choose the effective one. If he's, if he's a clever cat, which he probably is because he's a CEO, he's going to come back with the odd amendment to try and make it look like he knows something. He's going to come back and go, yeah, that's really good. That's good, Andrew. Try and add this and this, and I think you'll be about there. And I'll pretend I didn't think of that. Good idea. I didn't think of that. I'm going to add it right away. We'll update you shortly. I'll pretend I didn't fucking know and pretend it's important even though it doesn't matter. He'll, he'll think he tricked me. Ah, Andrew, he's a fucking smart fucker, but I'm still the smartest. I'm the boss. Bam! That's how they like you. Then when you walk in there and go, excuse me, sir, I've been working really, really hard for you and I do my very, very best for this company, this corporation. I respect you absolutely, but I'm unfortunately in a situation where I need to get paid more money. So what's it going to be? That's what I used to do. I used to smash sales records and then they were sitting there like, this tech guy's going to make the company rich. I'd walk in there three months later and say, unfortunately, I'm in a situation where I need more money. Not, could you please consider, not, duh, 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 no. Unfortunately, I'm in a situation where I need more money. And their answer would be, okay, uh, well, we have a quarterly review coming up. 
and you need to make sure your sales stay on track, they try and delay it. And say, okay, I'll wait for the quarterly review, no problem, I'm very, very excited about smashing records. I'm no longer interested in sales targets, I'm interested in beating the company's sales records. I know they're already mine, but I'm gonna beat them again. I say that, and the reason I say all that, knowing that the quarterly review is two, three weeks away, is because basically I've said, you better give me a pay rise in that review, or I'm leaving. And the CEO was sitting there and go, fuck, this fucker, I can't let him go, he's the best we got. I have to put his money up. But, and when the quarterly review comes, say, oh yeah, hi, sir, they, uh, obviously I've been doing fantastic, da 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 Sometimes I had a couple of them try it. Unfortunately, we're not gonna increase your pay at this time. I say, okay, no problem, I, I appreciate that. I just wanna make it clear with you, I'm gonna do my utmost, I'm gonna continue doing my job effectively. I believe if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it properly, but I am in a position where I, unfortunately, do require more money, so I'm gonna start looking for another term of employment. I'm gonna leave then. Every time I got an email within two days, some fucking offer. Even if I didn't need the money, take the money, who the fuck? Even if it's only a little bit of money, who cares, take it, thanks. It's a principal thing. You're gonna fucking reward me, motherfucker. What I deserve. I got a company car that exact same way. I came and I sat down and I said, excuse me, sir, da, 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 unfortunately I'm in a position where I can no longer use my own personal vehicle. He said, well, we don't do company cars. I said, I understand that. And I know you're paying me 20 cents per mile, but the car I have, it's been damaged on the car. Also, my brother needs to use the car. I am a very good salesman. I, can, I intend to continue to sell effectively. I guarantee I will continue to break every single company record, but I can no longer do it in my vehicle. I need to be provided with a vehicle or I can no longer work for this company. Boom, give me a car. Most of you fuckers are afraid to say shit. Walk in there, give me a car, I want a car. Literally, me and my brother were sitting in our apartment one day. He said, oh, I need the car tomorrow. I was like, I need that, I'll go to a meeting. Da, da, da. And I thought, oh, fuck this, they can give me a fucking car. Next day, had a car. We don't do company cars. Yeah, you do renting a fucking car because your number one salesman makes you all your money fucking said so. I guarantee you do that, don't you? Went down to Hertz and picked me up a fucking nice car. Of course you did, BMW's 3 Series, thanks. I spilled coffee all over the fucking seats. Ain't mine, I don't give a fuck. So you got a B, mean your shit. But with CEOs, sometimes you have to pretend you're listening, but pretend you're listening to people, they like that shit. Give you a little notepad, get your shit together. This could also work with women. Sometimes when one of my girlfriends, I say one of, because all you real Jews know how us real Jews live, they're like, oh, I've really got a problem, I need your time, and they're complaining to me. I say, look, listen, I'm busy right now, but I'm gonna come around later and we're gonna sort it out. If I say, okay, tell me what's the matter, and I have to listen, no, 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 I'm gonna come around later and sort it out. I turn up later, okay, you have all my attention, what's the problem? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, all right, okay, I'm gonna do something about it. Yeah, but do what? Listen, I'm a fucking man, I know what to do, just shh. And then you do nothing and then they forget about it because of whatever. It's no big deal. But just giving someone your undivided attention in a short burst can be extremely effective. Extremely effective. Leaning forward implies you're paying attention. Keep that in mind. As opposed to leaning back, we've already discussed this already. I've got a long list of questions for you motherfuckers. Leaning forward implies you're paying attention. Someone goes, how do I make it sh clear that I'm paying attention to them? Well, make it clear you're listening to them. We've just discussed all this. But also lean forward. You can lean forward sometimes. Yes, tell me. It matters so much. I don't actually recommend this for women, but it is something you can do. Also, when we're talking about women, there's a lot of body language with pictures of women that people talk about. Like, don't lean in towards the girl. Well, we just talked about leaning in, because leaning in shows that you're listening, shows you're attentive. But if every single picture is of you leaning into your girlfriend, then it shows that basically she's in charge because you listen to her, as opposed to her leaning into you. So it is a sign of submission. For the same reason it's a sign of listening, it's a sign of submission. So keep that in mind. If you want to have a picture of you and your girl, you want to put it on Instagram, whatever, whatever. It needs to be a picture of you. I'm the man. I am the, I am the oak tree. She's hugging the oak tree. The oak tree doesn't bend over to the people who hugs it. I'm the fucking G. She enters your world. You don't enter hers. Most of you guys already know this stuff. So it's not that complicated. But you know, it hasn't got to be conscious. It, the reason body language is so effective is because it's unconscious. That's why it's effective. That's why people read it. Because it happens by accident. So you have to consciously alter yours, but when you're going through life, you can't be sitting there going, how do I do this, how do I do that? You've got to just start thinking about it and practice a little bit and it become natural with your hands, etc., etc. So body language with women is never appear submissive. Women don't want to fuck a man they don't respect. Women don't have to like you to fuck you. They have to respect you. Do you know how many times I've retweeted, check my Twitter, I've retweeted a girl saying, I can't stand this Tate speech guy, but something about him, I have to follow him. Or on my YouTube video, I hate you, you're such a dickhead, I almost want to meet you. Or I retweeted a girl today, I, I almost want to slap, I, I kind of want to slap him, kind of want to fuck him. 
And that's because they don't like me, but they respect me. They're like, this fucking asshole. But yeah, I guess that's true. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. They respect me. Women don't gotta like you, they gotta respect you. So I, I fuck loads of girls who hate me. In fact, every day some girl's telling me she hates me. Every fucking day, I fucking hate you. Dick comes along and she's happy to take it. So you have to act in a way that's respected. And women don't respect men who are submissive to them. Women respect men who are in control. That's what happens. Women try to take control because it's natural for them to attempt it. And if you let them succeed, they'll just become worse and worse down a spiral of just becoming a bigger and bigger dickhead because they're waiting for you to take control back. That's what happens. So it's the same with your body language. So if you're always leaning in and she's the boss, she's not going to be happy with those photos. She wants a photo where you look in control and basically uninterested in her. If you look at photos, I recommend go to at Cobra Tate. We'll put a few examples in this video, but go to at Cobra Tate and find pictures of me with girls. There's one of me with a cigar and a girl either side. Am I staring at the girls? Do I give a fuck they even exist? I'm having a cigar, bro. I'm busy. I'm smoking. These are just some hoes, what, natural. Because I don't care about the girls. Who's in control there? Me. By not showing them attention. The number of the most important body language for a picture with a girl is basically to come across like, I don't give a fuck. Someone goes, you're about to take a picture with a girl. How do you come across as an alpha? You don't give a shit about the girl. Simple. You don't care about the girl. That's how you come across as an alpha. Take the picture, let you take it. She wasn't even fucking there. Bang, smoking. Oh, there's a hoe there, there's a hoe there. Take life, whatever. That's one. There's another one of me with sunglasses on with two blondes either side. And in this one, I'm smiling. Why am I smiling? I'm smiling because the one I'm looking at just agreed to get fucked with the other one. Two seconds before that, I said, you're both staying with me tonight. She goes, oh, I don't know. I'm nervous. I said, look, we're going to go drinking. She goes, oh, oh, maybe. And I smiled. I said, all right, good. We're going to go out. I was smiling because she agreed. Like I said earlier, positive reinforcement. I'm miserable. You said what I wanted you to say. Now I'll smile. Well, I just smiled at her because I knew she was about to be licking the other one's pussy in about four hours' time. That's what that one was. But in general, I'm sitting there. If I wasn't looking at her and smiling and I was looking forward, I don't give a fuck. I'm a dude who doesn't care. Women are always attracted to assholes. People go, why do girls like assholes? They don't like assholes. They like men who, overt, who display overtly masculine qualities. Men who don't succumb to their wishes. Men who don't bend to their will. Men who are in charge, men who retain control, men who can't be influenced or complained at or nagged at. And those kind of men are assholes. It's not about the fact that he's an asshole. It's about the fact that they can't control him. It's about the fact that they're trying to take a picture with him. He doesn't give a fuck if she's there or not. And those are overtly masculine, overtly attractive qualities to a woman. Even she doesn't understand why, but that's the reality of it. So if you're sitting there going, how do I take a picture with a girl? Take a picture with a girl like she doesn't exist. I'll put up another picture here of me and my girlfriend in Thailand, the last picture of me taken. There, you've just seen it. Do I look like I give a fuck that she's there? Now I am looking at her. A lot of body language, every pill guys go, don't even look at the girl, don't look at the girl, that's bad body language. Come on, you're a human, you look at things, it's normal. What the fuck am I gonna do? I look away all the time, like an idiot. But you can tell by my body language, I don't give a fuck. Her hand's on my knee, she's smiling, I'm not. You can tell by that body language who the fucking boss is. So, a lot of the red pill stuff is super specific. Like I've told you guys when I'm teaching in the PhD course, there's no such thing as an exact formula. There's no such thing as an exact specific thing. It's understanding general rules, general themes, and implementing them. That's why everything I teach is quite generalized. I'm waiting for you guys to see it, ingest it, understand it, and implement it in your own unique style. Because then it comes, across as, it comes across as authentic. If I say, do this with your hands exactly, do this, you look like little fucking robots. No, I'm telling you to be aware of certain things. Like chess, you know the rules and you make your own moves based on the rules to win. You have to develop your own style. But in general, the key for women is to just make it clear you don't give a shit. Because women like that. And also, what's actually super beneficial is if you genuinely don't give a shit, then it's super easy. Why do you have to act like you don't give a shit if you actually don't give a shit? I actually don't care. I've been around so many shits. That picture of me with a cigar and there's two girls hanging off me. I was, when I was smoking a cigar, you can look carefully and you'll see my eyes, my eyes looking down. I'm looking at some guy and the guy's face was literally, he was literally like his world was blown. Cause he saw me with two tens, not these other pickup artist versions of tens, actual tens. Two smoking hot, big booty, big titty, 
hot ass young 20 year old chicks and he was there just like who the fuck is this guy Mr. Cigar just walked up and his chicks are hanging all over him is he a pimp is he famous who is he He's, he was just blown away I didn't give a fuck he gave a fuck that's the difference don't give a shit FDV we talked about smiling a little bit and we talked about smiling we said how it's a sign of submission also you guys will know on Twitter soy face that's a sign of submission as well if you're not comfortable within your own skin you see a lot of people they take pictures and they pull stupid faces they'll go like or or when they're with someone they're like all that shit is submission all that shit is evolutionary primate submissional you're just broadcasting to the world that you're a fucking loser don't do that you either smile in a picture because you're happy or you just look at the camera done uh, uh. You're not a fucking clown and you're not fucking 15. You're making stupid ass fucking faces. It's dumb. Don't do that. Ever. Especially not with a chick. Sometimes chicks do that a lot. <laughs> and you're next to her. <laughs> I guarantee you're not fucking her to do that shit. I've had girls do that next to me. <laughs> I'm just like looking at them like the moron they are. Because I don't give a fuck. What the fuck are you making stupid ass faces for? Fuck off. Suck this. So don't do that shit. So if you're pulling weird faces in photographs, that's because you're insecure. And you're trying to broadcast to the world that you're a little liberal coward. And you're hoping that no one destroys you. You're hoping Big Daddy Tate doesn't come along and squash you in the palm of this awesomely huge hand. Don't be like that shit. I fucking hate that shit. I don't hang around with people who do that shit. Don't do that. Ever. I'm going to put up a picture of my brother now with his girl. Bang, you just saw it. That girl there is called Bianca Dragashani. She has a million followers or near a million on Instagram. You look her up. You can Google her. She's the most famous girl in Romania. She's like, oh, she had her own TV show. Legitimately A-list in Romania. Very rich as well. Most men would be intimidated by a famous woman who's that hot, who's rich. Tristan went up to her in a fucking petrol station. Went up to her. Started talking shit just the way me and him do it. Got her number. Progression. PhD guys, Tower of Power, introduced himself, blah, 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 confident, bang, bang, bang. He didn't get her number, he got her Instagram. Messaged her there on the spot so she saw it, even amongst a million messages. Ended up getting her number, da, da. Anyway, he ends up fucking this chick. She's married. She's fucking married. Whole thing comes out in the papers. Me and Tristan end up A-list stars in Romania because we're the guy who fucked Bianca. I'm the brother, but he's the guy who fucked Bianca when she's married. Everything. Complete craziness. Anyway, the point of this picture is this. Most men, when they get a girl like that, they're all over her. She's famous. She's rich. She's important. She's special. <laughs> look at Tristan's body language in that picture. Does he look like he gives one fuck about that chick? He doesn't give a fuck about that hoe. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Some hoe. Mm. How many hoes have I fucked? Mm. Who cares? You dudes are out here caring too damn much. It's garbage. Like all of my courses... What I'm going to do is I'm going to update them forever for free. So if you've bought the PhD course, you've bought the webcam course, you've bought this course, your money has been well spent because you're going to be getting new videos every couple of weeks for free forever. So this is the basis of my theory on body language. If I've missed anything or there's anything you want me to talk about, send me an email. Because guess what? Another video will come out and I'll answer your questions specifically. So if you've watched this and you feel like you haven't learned anything, you're fucking lying. Because I guarantee you don't have everything I've said to you. I guarantee you don't have under control, understood, analyzed, and implemented. You haven't. So fucking go away and do that shit. Get your things together. Put your hands in the right fucking place. Look like a G. Get your shit right. Learn how to go from fucking crazy to calm. Not from calm to crazy. Put your shit together. If you have any further questions, email them to me. Because there will be another body language video in the next week or so. And I'll answer some more. Right, we've been over the mindset. The mindset, the four tenets of the mindset are believe you can do absolutely anything. Two, be pissed off you haven't done it yet. Three, absolutely nobody is coming to save you. And four, your word has to be iron-willed and use that for unlimited motivation. This is about body language. 
I like to look at humans from an evolutionary standpoint. I like to look at us as a species because, like I said, I'm an atheist. I do not believe that God put us here. We're no special. We're not special. We're no different than any other animal here. Okay, we're more intelligent, but there's always going to be a smartest. You know, we're not the fastest or the strongest or anything else. So we're an animal species. And if you look at humans uh, from that perspective and you look at men, males, and I'm assuming, like I said previously, most of you are men, males for a very long period of time had a very physical role. Our role was combatants. Our role was a combative role. Our role was to protect or to destroy or to dominate or to conquer. This was a male's role. So in the modern society where we pretend physicality isn't important and we deny physicality and people say it doesn't matter. It absolutely does matter for, because since the dawn of human time, my favorite saying that everyone mocks me for, since the dawn of human time, for 95% of our existence, a man's role was primarily a physical role. So physicality is extremely important. And when you're looking at body language, it's quite difficult to have the body language of an alpha. What is an alpha? Let me diverse quickly. What is an alpha? If you look in the, a lion's pride, who's the alpha? The alpha is the biggest, strongest lion. This is, this is the alpha. The alpha is the badass. So can you mimic the body language of a biggest, longest, strongest lion? Yeah, of course. But if you're not the biggest, strongest lion, you know, it's not as easy to pull off and someone might call your bluff. So this is actually a very easy video. Body language is down to your physicality as a whole. Uh, the body language of a G is a combative body language. I'm not saying you walk through life like this, like looking for a fight, not at all. But you have to have a presence about you, whereas you're not an easy target. It's quite funny actually, because when you're a fighter, you can spot other fighters a mile off. Like, and it's not just big muscly guys. Like you can put me in a room with and 30 guys who go to the gym who are fitness experts can come in and walk through. And if one of them is a high level combatant, if one of them is a, a professional fighter like me, I can, I can tell by the way he moves, probably the same way a dancer can sense another dancer. I can sense another fighter. And it's something instinctual. It's something I can't even tell you how I do it. I can just tell by the way someone moves if they can fight or if they can't fight. Doesn't matter, they can have the best body in the world. They can be ripped, da, da, da. But it's the way they move. I know, I've seen guys who don't have a body like that and I can sense it. And I've seen guys who are built like that and I can just tell it, they would crumble. It really is an amazing thing. And I think this is something that you become more tuned into, more honed on when you're a fighter yourself. But it's obviously something that humans naturally possess. We naturally possess the ability to spot another male and think, that guy's a dangerous guy. So I can tell you tips and tricks in an attempt to mimic the body language of a dangerous person or you can become a dangerous person. This course is not a short cut course. This is not tips and tricks. This is not bullshit. This is about how to become a G, how to become a genuine ass, a genuine male of substance. And to become a genuine male of substance, you need to know how to fight. It's very difficult to be a G if you're going through life and you crumble at, at, at physical confrontation. Because when you get to a certain point in your life, you will encounter physical confrontations. If you're gonna go and travel the world and drive fast cars and wear expensive things and attempt to fuck beautiful women all over this planet, sooner or later, you're going to attract negative intention from either jealous men or an ex-boyfriend or a brother or who fu a fucking robber who wants your car, who knows? Are you really a G if you mimic every single as aspect of a high quality man and then when that situation happens, you, you fold? No, of course you're not. You need to learn how to fight. I don't need to teach you how to fight. I don't need to sit here in this course and say, do this, do that. I don't need to teach you any of that because you can go, and it doesn't matter what city you are on earth, there's an MMA class or there's a boxing class that will teach you how to fight. You need to dedicate substantial periods and, 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 and portions of your time to learning how to fight. You need to get hit, you need to have your ass kicked you would learn how to kick someone's ass. And this is absolutely essential to one, the mindset, and two, the physicality. Firstly, mindset-wise, fighting is a, is a brilliant thing because fighting is 100% accountable. Even if you play soccer, for example, even if your team wins, maybe you didn't do very much, or maybe you kicked the ball and the wind helped you, who knows? But fighting, if you got punched in the face, you didn't move. And if you punched him in the face, you threw your hand. In fighting, we always say there's no such thing as a lucky punch, and it's true. You know, I, if I dedicate my life to learning how to punch and then I knock someone out, is it a lucky punch? No, I knocked him out, that's what, that's what I've been training to do. No such thing as a lucky punch. So mindset wise, it's perfect for your accountability. 
Secondly, it's a huge challenge. Learning how to fight is extremely difficult. It's more difficult than learning how to dance or learning how to do anything else. And the reason for this is because learning how to fight, all humans have an instinctual way of fighting. We don't have an instinctual way to dance as much, but all humans basically are pre-programmed to fight. But the way we're pre-programmed to fight is completely wrong. We're pre-programmed to lift our head up so we look big and we can see and, and to swing with our hands low for maximum power. And these are completely wrong in terms of traditional chin down, hands up fighting. So when you're learning to fight, you're, you're reprogramming your basic instincts. And this is why it's so difficult. This is why it takes more practice than any other sport. I could learn to dance much easier than a dancer could learn to fight at high level. Um, and that's because fighting is extremely chaotic, it's extremely quick, it hurts. And on top of that, you're trying to reprogram a basic instinct. So it's a very difficult thing to do, but if you want to become a G for real, you need to learn how to fight. And once you learn how to fight, your body language, when I say once you learn how to fight, learning how to fight takes years. Once you start to begin to learn how to fight, it's a lifestyle choice. This is not a, I do a six week course and I know how to fight. No, this is a lifestyle choice where you start to dedicate a certain period of your time every single week to being a combative individual. And it's something that you never really give up on because you never completely learn how to fight. So it's something you're going to have to change your lifestyle and base it around. But when you start to do that, your body language is going to change. And once again, just like in the first lesson, when you start to do that, the way you interact and view the world will start to change. The way you view other people will start to change. This is a great thing about, especially when I had Twitter and the internet. I wasn't, I wasn't big on Twitter until Trump was... Trump was elected and that's when I started to tweet and they verified me straight away and I got mixed up and everything went crazy. But um, you realize that 99% of the people on there with their opinions and who are being rude would never speak to you that way in, in, in real life. It never bothered me. It didn't ever upset me. But when I was on Twitter, I'd never been spoken to that way in real life. Nobody ever spoke to me that way. No one ever argued with me that way. And I thought, well, why is that? And I thought, because I have a physical presence that even I was unaware of. If I sit with someone who hates Trump in, real, in the real world, the way they speak to me is completely different than they do on Twitter because even subconsciously they're thinking, this guy is a dangerous guy. And even if, even if they know I'd never attack them, because I'm not, I'm not an idiot, I'm not an animal, I don't have a criminal record, I'm not, I'm not a thug. But instinctually, in, inside of their mind, from an evolutionary standpoint, they're thinking, this is not the kind of guy you, you call names. This is not the kind of guy you talk to in that manner. And it's, it was a really great experiment for me to see the way that people talk to you through a computer and the way that I've never been interacted with that way in real life. And I was like, well, why is that? Because I said this to someone else, they go, oh, people talk to me like that all the time. I was like, well, yeah, it's because you're you and I'm me. So a physical presence is, is a real thing. And it's a real thing, one, with other males. It's certainly a real thing with females. Absolutely a real thing with females. And this is something that either I can teach you to imitate, I can tell you tips and tricks, or you can just go and fucking do it. If you go and do it for real, you don't need tips and tricks. Are you going to be world champion? No, because I'm in the top 0.1% of, of physical athletes. But can you be good? Sure, you can be good. And is it going to damage your life in any way to dedicate specific time to learning how to fight? Of course not. You're going to be in better physical condition, better mental condition. You're going to have a better body language because a male's body language is a combative body language. That's what men are meant to do. We are meant to fight, we're meant to conquer. This is why men have been men since the dawn of human time. This is why the Romans got some rocks, melted the rocks, made swords. These motherfuckers, they didn't have Google Maps, they didn't know where they were going. They thought, let's just walk in this direction and then we're gonna find some people and we're gonna kill them. And we're gonna take all their women and we're gonna conquer their city because we want to. This is what men have been built to do since the dawn of human time. Men are combative individuals. So to pretend that combat's not real anymore and we live in society and you don't have to do that, all garbage, you know? And this is Western society bullshit anyway. If you've been, I've been to 71 countries. If you go to the places I've been, you will realize that physical presence is still a very real thing. Absolutely a very real thing in many parts of this planet still today. So body language of a G is a very, very short and simple lesson. One, go and learn to fight because a man's body language needs to be a combative body language and there's no point in me teaching you how to imitate that when you can go and learn it for real. That's the first thing, go and learn how to fight. And that's it. It's really that simple. If you want uh, a body language which really does display your value as a high value male, then go and become one. And learning how to fight is, is the easiest way to do that. Which course, my brother's body language, as it's been commented on by many, many people, is always 
on point. But I'm here today to talk about how you and your best friend, your brother, your companion, whoever you like to hang out with, how your body language can complement each other. Now, the main reason for this isn't to be combat ready, as Andrew touched on in a previous video, but it's more to avoid confrontation. Now, me and Andrew are very controversial characters. Almost nobody who knows who we are likes us. You are one of the uh, few people, you are one of the elite, the people who actually understand what we're talking about and like what we have to say, but most people don't. That said, we are never started on in the real world. Now, of course, now we're well-renowned uh, kickboxing champions, but we've always had the same principles and the same body language and the same mannerisms. And we've noticed that people do not start on us very often. And the best way to avoid conflict and to avoid combat is to be perceptive. There was a very famous experiment actually done in India where uh, tiger attacks on Indian miners were completely going crazy. The, the numbers were through the roof. And you can look this up. Please look it up. And the solution they came to, to avoid tigers attacking the miners, was these miners would take human-faced masks and wear them on the back of their heads. So they'd do their mining, go down in their boats, drive around in their trucks, be out in the open with this mask on the back of their head. And if you look it up on Google Images, uh, for sure you'll be able to find exactly what I'm talking about. You'll see that the masks look stupid. It, it looks ridiculous. It was, it was only a very minor touch that these guys thought about the problem and uh, actually applied something. But tiger attacks essentially dropped to zero. Now men, very much like tigers, are big pussies too. I just thought of that. I didn't actually write this. <laughs> but um, what you'll find is everyone's a coward and no one wants to fight one-on-one. -on -one. So even if there's only two of you, your body language, how you stand and where you place yourself can be a massive deterrent to being started on or having any kind of physical confrontation. Now in school, they teach you uh, things like a strong handshake. And I'm sure the basis of this is in every single course or guide to body language in the world, but they teach it for the wrong, wrong reasons. In school, I was taught that a strong handshake makes the person who I want to employ me like me more or take me more seriously. But you could convey many different expressions and emotions with something as simple as a handshake. If I'm in a room with a group of people who may or may not be hostile, if I'm in a room with a group of people who may or may not be hostile, the standard good handshake they'll teach you to give with the right expression on your face can also mean don't fuck with me. It can say, I'm stronger than you. It could say, I'm not a pushover. These are things that people don't think about because it's never taught. Everyone's taught how to shake hands, to say, please employ me, please give me a job. But many other things can be conveyed with just a handshake. Now, when me and Andrew are out in public, we're always watching each other's backs. Now, paranoia isn't cool. It isn't sexy. Uh, and it isn't really alpha to be paranoid all the time that somebody's going to start on you. Um, I know people who walk through the world in this way. They're scared of everything and everybody. The, the police, the person walking behind them, they're jumpy. That's not what I'm talking about. And that is not the way men like me and Andrew behave. When I talk about watching each other's backs, it's the small things that me and Andrew do that people who hang around with us pick up on. You guys at home won't see these things because they're never recorded and they're never on camera. Me and Andrew always sit, for example, across the table from one another, just in case somebody decides to come up from behind and attack us. It's very much like the tiger analogy, wearing the mask on the back of your head, eyeing his other set of eyes. If Andrew's on a date with a beautiful woman and I'm sitting with my back against the wall and I can see what's going on behind Andrew, Andrew can relax. Andrew can have his good time. He can not worry about <laughs> looking over his shoulder because, you know, me and Andrew do have a few enemies um, everywhere, including the city where we live. This doesn't just apply when you're with somebody else, but it can very much apply to yourself. Are you by yourself? Are you in Starbucks getting a coffee about to do some work on your laptop? Fine. 
be very careful about where you sit. Choose somewhere where your back is against the wall. Like right now, I'm sitting in a corner. I can see everything that's going on in the room in front of me. This is the place you want to sit. Not because you think somebody's going to come up and attack you. Not because you are scared of uh, assailants or muggers or robbers. Just being able to see everything that goes on in the room gives you the chance to react to situations. I guarantee if you were to look at some of the violent, crazy things that have happened in Europe from bombings to terrorist attacks in the last few years, some of the people who survived, survived because of where they were sitting. And it wasn't chance. A few of the people, I'm sure, were self-aware enough to be perspicacious about their environment, to sit in the corner, to watch what's going on, to be able to react to the environment around them. Now, when I see people with headphones in, slouched over a table with their coffee, typing away, away on their laptop, and the whole room's behind them and they're facing a wall, they look like a target to me. You don't have to be a tiger to know that that person is a target. If anything goes down in that coffee shop, if anything goes down in that restaurant, that person is going to be one of the first to die. So watch each other's backs and sit across the table from one another always. I have had people who I've invited over to Eastern Europe who assume that me and Andrew are the kings of everywhere we go. Mostly because me and Andrew are very adept fighters and we can handle ourselves very well. But you need to understand in most situations from Western Europe to Eastern Europe, when you go to very expensive, exclusive places, nightclubs, first class lounges at airports, the people around you are your equals or your betters in, in some respect, financially or, or, or some, in, in one way or another. Now, if I'm in a club and I'm sitting in the VIP section, there are six tables only in an entire club that has maybe 2,000 people in it. I know those other people are somebody's too. There very rarely will a club just let some loser in to sit around and drink their super expensive alcohol. And even then it's a promoter who knows people or who's friends with the owner or something like that. Now me and Andrew hang out in Eastern Europe a lot. So watching each other's backs isn't just actually viewing your surroundings and knowing what's going on around you, your self-awareness. It's also how you interact with the people who surround you. To give you an example, if I sit down at a table and there are three or four dudes, a, a number of dudes who outnumber us to my right. Now this has happened plenty of times where there are six or seven girls on my table. Now how you assert yourself is going to determine whether or not those guys try to roll up on your women. You're only two guys, you're with six girls. They assume that these girls are friends of my girlfriend. They don't know I'm fucking three and Andrew's fucking three. So of course it's natural and normal for other guys to at least think about talking to the girls who've come with you to the club. That doesn't happen to me and Andrew because of the way we assert ourselves. What you'll typically find is the most confident amongst them works as a scout. will say hi, will say, can I borrow a lighter from one of the girls? When that happens, Always ask the girl if she's okay afterwards. I do it all the time. Girl, a guy will be like, excuse me, do you have a lighter to one of my girls? I'll say, hey, you okay? And touch her arm gently. So the guy says, oh, I was just asking for a lighter. No problem, my friend. Handshake, eye contact. You know, you have to assert, don't fuck with me with the initial contact with the guy. If I just turn my back and ignore him after the lighter has been borrowed and he gives it back, he's going to say, where are you from? Who are you? What's up? You know, you have to cut things off the moment they happen. You have to nip it in the bud. So the way you conduct yourself within your own group of people will stop others trying to come over and invade your space. So the key is always to put yourself in a position of power. Don't just sit down and start guzzling away on drinks. I don't typically sit next to Andrew and talk away and let our girls mind their own business. We're mixed in with them. Two or three girls divided by one of us at any stage around a round table, uh, if you know what I mean. So we're always in control of our group, in control of our herd, if you like. So the way you position yourself lets others know not to creep up on you, not to try to talk to your women, and especially not to start some sort of stupid argument. That said, in clubs also, combat readiness. I always like to keep at least one of my hands free. If my hand isn't free, it's something that can be used as a weapon. Now I've, in my life, been in maybe two fights inside of nightclubs, none of them in Eastern Europe. It's more of an England thing. And I avoid conflict at all costs. But the way you stand can mean the difference between getting your ass kicked and winning a fight. 
Typically, even if I'm smoking a cigar, the cigar can be easily dropped. I'll keep it in my left hand. My right hand is the hand that I'm going to strike with first. That's where I'll hold my glass because a glass can be used as a weapon just as much as a fist can be used as a weapon. And I always stand left foot in front of right foot ever so slightly just so I can't be caught off guard, just so that I'm not off balance, just so that at any one time with my glass and my cigar in one hand, if someone approaches really quickly, which is how these things always start, you're always good to throw a strike, throw the glass or throw a punch. Before people even come over and try to talk to girls you're with or try to start a fight with you, people will always scout you out. They'll always stare at you for a little period of time. They'll ask their friends, what do you think these two are, are, are doing with all those girls? Where do you think these guys are from? So when you catch them looking at you, don't stare them out. Don't put an aggressive look on your face because that just makes them want to fight you more, especially if you're outnumbered. That's going to encourage a, a physical altercation. So you don't sit there looking angry at them. And what you absolutely don't do is when they catch you looking at them, look away instantly. That shows cowardice. What I do, I'm a very confident guy, Andrew as well. Keep in mind that when we're in a high class establishment, the people who are with us are, you know, successful guys, rich guys, mafia guys, dangerous guys. They're somebody's to be sitting there. So if I'm holding my drink, typically if I catch them looking and I catch eye contact, I'll snot at them or I'll go like this. I'll raise my glass slightly and continue drinking. They'll typically do the same thing back and that eases all tension. Nobody after that is going to come over and start trying to throw punches to your face. So if you sit confidently, and assert yourself just with your eyes and the looks that you give the people around you, you can avoid basically all types of, of, of confrontation. No one's gonna come over and try and talk to your women. No one's gonna come over and try to assault you, try to insult you. Um, you have to set an atmosphere and set a vibe that you're friendly, but you're not to be fucked with. And one more time, that takes me back to the handshake. That's what you need to say when you introduce yourself to people, especially if they come over to your table and try to do something you don't like, like talk to your girlfriend. Now I know I may look big and scary and some people watching may think, oh well, you know, it's all right for you. You're big and mean looking, so nobody's gonna start a fight on you. Nobody's gonna <laughs> wanna engage in conflict with you. That's not necessarily true. You can assert yourself with confidence alone. The way you scout the room, everything I was saying earlier, sitting in the corner, watching everybody around you, gives you the chance to see exactly what's going on. Now that reminds me of a clip I saw on the internet of a man, I believe it was in Australia, where 10 to 15 guys ran into a bar. I think they were trying to attack somebody or rob the place. I'm not sure what these assailants were doing, but this guy was standing, his, his back was to a, a pillar in the middle of the room, so no one could necessarily run up behind him. And he was standing at the bar. He wasn't a very big guy or a necessarily scary looking guy. But he stood there with one of his hands on his glass and the other hand completely free. And as each person rushed by him and rushed up to him, he glanced at them slightly. Now the CCTV footage is a little grainy. I can't see exactly how he looked at these people, but he didn't look down at the floor. He didn't stare at them with fear and he didn't sit there with an angry look on his face. He must have, by process of elimination, 10, 10 guys ran by him, they all glanced at him and nobody started on him. He must have conveyed some of the tips I've been talking to you about in this video. Now, why does nobody start on this guy? He doesn't panic, he doesn't flee, he doesn't run. That portrays somebody who can handle themselves, certainly. His hands are free, he's calm, he's confident, and he's looking at what's going on around him. The people who rushed into that bar were 10 to 15 individuals. They were not confident men. Nobody who wants to go and rob somebody or attack somebody has to bring 10 to 15 of their friends if they're not cowards. It's like splitting up a pack of sheep. You know, the herd on its own can look intimidating coming toward you. But when you get one on their own, they're absolutely terrified. And that's exactly how this guy handled the situation. He looked at each one of them as a one-on-one -on -one situation, a one-on-one -on -one, man on man confrontation. And when they got that look and when the guys made eye contact with him, or when they brushed past him, none of those people wanted to fight him. And that's the way the real world is. This takes me back to my original point. What those Indian miners did by putting the masks on the back of their head may seem so insignificant and so stupid. And by all means, please Google it. They look ridiculous. But all it takes is the tiniest of little steps and the tiniest of little details 
to deter physical confrontation and to stay out of conflict. The reason behind this is because most men are cowards. Most men don't want to fight you one-on-one. -on -one. Occasionally you'll meet that guy. Every once in a while who thinks he can handle himself, has a problem with you, and wants to deal with you, and will actually come forward wanting to fight you head on, but that's not the way the world is. 99.9% .9 of men cannot throw a punch. They can't throw a punch, they can't take a punch, and deep down, they know it. That's why tiny little details can completely avoid conflict. Now, in the last 10 years, me and Andrew have had maybe five or six physical altercations where hitting someone has become a necessity, and every single time they've been very easy to deal with. But on top of those, there have been at least 200 times where somebody has wanted to hit me or Andrew, or somebody has thought something negative about me or Andrew, and it could have spiraled into a physical altercation had I been in the wrong company or had I displayed the wrong body language. That's a massive part of conflict avoidance.